I found oscillators to be an incredibly simple yet robust tool in game development. In this video, I'll be introducing the different types of oscillators with a few examples which I'm fond of. So firstly, there are linear oscillators, better known as springs. As you know, a linear oscillator desires a certain position. This we call the equilibrium. When I push on the wall, I stretch the oscillator and move the wall away from its equilibrium position. In response, the oscillator tries to pull the wall back, and when I finally let go, that's exactly what happens. The wall gets pulled back with a force proportional to its displacement from the equilibrium. This is encapsulated by Hooke's law. Now, as you can see, the wall isn't stopping on its own. If we would like to add some damping from drag or friction, say, then we can use the full form of Hooke's law instead. Well, let's add that now in the game. And what we see different is that the velocity is slowing itself all the way down to nothing. And that's really all there is to these linear oscillators. Uh, but what happens if we increase the stiffness? Well, this is where we can get different behaviors out of it. Now you can see I've increased the stiffness and I can't push it as far and it pulls itself back to the equilibrium a little bit faster. Now then, a frequent application for linear oscillators beyond weird sliding walls is in floating platforms. Great. This is a pretty common use in games, and it's easy to see why. Well now then, what if we take the oscillator a little less literally, and we can start off with a bouncy object here. Now. Instead of using the oscillator's position for the object's position, as done previously, let's instead use the oscillator's position for our object's scale. Well, I think that looks pretty good. But something's definitely missing. The effect looks great in the dimension of the oscillation, but nothing's really happening in the other dimensions. And so, from the front, we can't actually see anything. Well, what we want instead is for the other dimensions to stretch when the oscillating dimension squashes, and vice versa. This would be the same as effectively holding the object's volume constant. And we can see the updated version here. Okay, great. It looks a lot better to me. Even from the front now, we can see that it works just as expected. Phew. Well, that was a lot of explaining so far, but thankfully, we now have all the basics we need for more exotic applications. Well, let's look at the other type of oscillators, called torsional oscillators, or pendulums. Now, instead of desiring a certain position, a torsional oscillator's equilibrium is at a certain angle. Thankfully, the equation works just as before, only replacing linear displacement and velocity with their angular counterparts and we get a torque rather than a linear force. Let's check it out on this door. And why stop at one door? And now let's make them bounce, just for the hell of it. That's really great. You can see how much uh, sort of different styles we can get just by tweaking a couple of parameters. Finally, let's finish off back where we started with the capsule. Uh, so we have the same capsule that we ended up with, but why not also make it a torsional oscillator? And great. It looks great, but the gizmos are quite distracting and it doesn't really indicate what's going on. Let's turn them off and nice. Uh, we can introduce them back in one by one. Uh, so starting with the linear one, you can see how the scale is being affected by this. And turning that off and turning on the torsional oscillator. Okay, great, you can see how that's uh, determining the angle. Really nice stuff. Well then, that's all I have to show for now. I do hope you find this video useful. 
I'm going to finish off by showing you a few pendulums, each with different stiffnesses. If you really fancy a challenge, then see if you can figure out if the stiffness is increasing or decreasing towards or away from the camera.